We've been waiting all week. The anticipation continues to build, and we're ready to go for game one. It'll be Arizona and Washington in the 38th Women's College World Series. Every player here has dreamed of this moment since the first time they picked up a bat. Will the Pac-12 rise again? Will there be a Cinderella story? Welcome to the Women's College World Series. A hundred and twenty-three games in the NCAA tournament played, and we're down to our final eight teams. Six former national champions, a first-timer at the World Series in Minnesota, and for the first time since 2011, the Oklahoma State Cowgirls have joined the party. Adam Amin, two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough, Tiffany Green in a moment as well. Proud, pleased, and privileged to bring you this Women's College World Series. And we've been talking about this a lot, the Pac-12. Can they make it back, and can they make it back to the top of the sport? They're looking for their first title in eight years. We stood in the same spot last year in 2018 when there were four Pac-12 teams saying, is this the year of the Pac? They made it close. Washington made it to the finals, but they didn't win the whole thing. So this year is this year in 2019 to bring the national championship back to the Pac. And in a year where the home run ball has returned to the sport, in a year where offense is getting back to one of its most explosive seasons, it's pitching and defense that gets it done for Washington, and they might have the best shortstop in the country. If there was an award for national National Defensive Player of the Year, it would go to Sis Bates. She is the best shortstop in the country. She not only makes the routine plays, she makes the spectacular top 10 Sports Center plays. Wouldn't surprise me if she landed a couple of Sports Center top 10 plays here at the World Series this season, but she's a big reason why they have a great defense and they shut out a lot of teams with two great arms in the circle. They have two All-Americans in the circle that will battle against one of the best offensive teams in the country. Arizona, for the first time since 2010, is back at the Women's College World Series, and they've done it in a very similar fashion. They have a lot of pop. Usually Arizona in the past was known for their speed and a little bit of pop. This Arizona team is known for the home run ball, 106 home runs on the season. And a perfect segue into our Capital One starting lineups for the Arizona Wildcats. Doing it with the most prolific home run duo in the country. Jesse Harper bats second. Deja Mulipola bats fourth. Combined in this season, they have hit 50 home runs, which is more than Washington has hit as a team in this season. Be part of one of the most prolific lineups in the country. Mike Candrea and his team are back at the Women's College World Series. The eight-time champions for the first time in nine years. They've returned to the grandest stage in softball. We mentioned a pair of All-Americans in the circle back for Washington at the World Series. Gabby Plains, the first teamer. Taryn Alvello, the veteran third teamer. Yeah, she has a lot of experience on this field. She's gotten All-American a couple of times. She throws hard. She loves her curveball and her rise ball. A much different look than what Gabby Plain, the other starter for Washington, has. Four shutouts in five postseason games. Plain has had four of them. Alvello with one as well. They've allowed one earned run the entire NCAA tournament. Can they hold down this Arizona team whom they faced earlier in the season and swept the Cats, outscoring them 12 to 6? And Alyssa Palomino Cardoza, a two-time All-American, will lead things off in the Women's College World Series. teams out of the winningest conference in the history of the sport get us going here in Oklahoma City and Palomino Cardoza takes ball one from Alvelo. <laughs> 
Palomino Cardoza quickly ahead in the count, 2-0. A couple of times in All-American. Stepped into the center field and leadoff spot left by Ashley Hughes, an Arizona team that brought back a lot of talent from last year. A 3-0 count to start. And an early visit from the veteran catcher Morgan Flores. She and Taryn Alvello very close. And Flores, who missed all of last season with an ACL injury, did not participate in the World Series, is back behind the plate to try to settle down her teammate. Three and 0 Four pitch walk and a batter on base for one of the best home run hitters in the country. Now you have to think playing the first game of in Oklahoma City at the Women's College World Series, there's going to be some nerves at the plate, in the circle, out on defense. Especially as a senior, just wanting to make the most of your senior year like Taryn Alvello. Here's Jesse Harper. She of 28 home runs this year. That leads the country, a two-time All-American. And against a big power hitting team like Arizona, you don't want to put on any extra base runners like walking Alyssa Palomino to start off this game. And then you have to face Harper, the best home run hitter in the country, who has the potential to hit it out on any pitch. It's an extra run sitting at first base right now that you can easily put on with a free pass. Another good two on Harper. Jesse Harper, one of the five players in the history of the NCAA tournament to have a three home run game that came against Auburn in the regional finals. Three of her country leading 28. Big cut, strikeout one. So Alvello retires, one of the tougher hitters in the country. Harper goes down. Mike Candrea's team, the second winningest head coach in the history of the sport, but their first appearance at the World Series since losing in the finals in 2010. There's Malia Martinez. That might have been the number that shocked a lot of us the most. Yeah. Nine year drought for the eight time national champion. Well, so much of the history of the sport lies in the Pac-12, specifically with UCLA and with Arizona. So seeing both of those teams back here in Oklahoma City, you just get nostalgic because you think about years and years even before this moment them playing against each other them winning national championships they have the history of this sport 1-1 one, one. for the Pac-12 23 national championships but currently in its longest title drought at eight years Arizona State the last to do it Mike Candrea's team hasn't won the national championship since going back to back in 2006 in 2007. Check swing, appeal down to first, and Chris Drum says no swing. And you can tell that Taryn Alvello is just a hard thrower. I mean, <laughs> you watch the bottom right-hand part of your screen. She's hitting 71, 72 miles an hour on the bug. She brings it. 2-2 delivery. And tailed outside. 72 on the gun right there, so that's basically the top. That's the apex of velocity that you're going to see in this sport. You hit 72, you're looking at basically 100 on a baseball gun. Yeah. The 3-2. Another big cut and another strikeout. And Alvello, after the leadoff walk, goes back to back with Kays. I mean, it's exactly what she did against Jesse Harper, too, in the strikeout before. Both of them on 72 miles an hour. They catch a lot of plate, but it's just the speed. She blows it by them. Inner half almost has a little bit of backdoor tail to it. Back to back strikeouts now for Alvello after the leadoff walk. And here's Deja Mulipola.
another All-American and the NFCA Catcher of the Year. A member of the Olympic roster. There are only two college players that are on the Team USA roster as of now for 2020. Rachel Garcia, the pitcher for UCLA, who is the best two-way player in the country, and then Muli Pola, who will be potentially her catcher on the Olympic team. And there for a strike, and it's two and one. And Muli Pola is just so talented in so many different ways. She's so athletic, great catcher. She frames well, has a good arm, and then, of course, has a little bit of pop in her swing. mentioned the Olympic team Mike Candre of course has been the head coach of the USA national team has been a medalist gold medal in 04 silver in 2008 those 1610 wins are the second most behind Michigan's Carol Hutchins and just six separate those two fantastic head coaches Flores runs it down and Palomino Cardoza stays at first and Coach Candrea is looking at her right now over at first base, like, what are you doing over there? You see a ball down like that, you've got to get yourself to second base. Every 60 feet is so important in the Women's College World Series. Payoff pitch. On the outside corner, and Alvelo strikes out the side in the first. Taryn Alvelo strikes out the side in the top of the first, so her offense comes to the plate in the bottom half. Washington starting lineup brought to us by Capital One and a player that was not in the lineup last year. Washington happy to have Morgan Flores back. She's back. She adds punch to this lineup with 22 home runs, leads the team by a mile, second best in the starting lineup, has five home runs behind her, and she has 22. And this is a Washington lineup that lost its top three home run hitters from a year ago. In fact, lost five hitters that all hit over 300 last year. But they'll go up against a first team All-American. What a season it's been for the senior Taylor McQuillan. She's had All-American type stuff this year. She really has. That's why she earned herself first team All-American this season. Coming from the left-hand side, has a lot of movement. And is, of course, as a lefty, she really brings that curveball to both sides of the plate. And there are seven left-handed hitters in the Washington lineup going up against McQuillan, including Sis Bates. No shock that Bates is the two-time Pac-12 Defender of the Year, a first-team All-American this season. Great on base percentage right at the top of the order. 70 hits for the second consecutive season. Puts down a bunt. It stays fair somehow, but the catcher, Muli Pola, an outstanding defender in her own right, gets the out on Bates. We were just talking about her, Adam. This is why she's one of the best catchers in the country, if not the best catcher. She is able to hop out, be so athletic of her crouch, read that spin, make the decision. I've got to play this. It's not going to spin foul. And not only am I going to play it, I'm going to get an out for the leadoff hitter in the speed of Sis Bates. One down for Flores. Again, if you're going to face Flores, the main punch, as Amanda talked about in this order, you want to do it without anybody on base. Way out in front. Ooh, there's that 50 mile an hour <laughs> change of pace from Taylor McQuillan <laughs> that she likes to utilize. Change of pace and known as her change up. It's about as far as she'll drop it down. 50 miles an hour coming in. Facing the hottest hitter in the NCAA tournament so far in Flores. It takes one in the back. 
So it's it's a couple of different speeds that she'll throw. You just saw her change up, but she'll also mix in an off-speed drop ball. She calls it her drop ball. She tries to throw it hard, but it's this pitch right here at about 60 miles an hour that just falls off the table. This is her change up. That's a pitch that you just saw against Flores. But when she mixes both of them, she starts them at similar locations. One goes down, one moves in and slightly across the plate. And that's why she's so tough to go up against because of the couple of different speeds that she mixes in. McQuillan, the senior, facing a freshman in Sammy Reynolds. And that changeup has been a huge part of her game this year, something that she's worked with her pitching coach, Taryn Mowat, really hard on this season. Taryn Mowat, who had one of the best changeups in the game, won the national championship back in 2007. Clips the corner that time. One and two on Reynolds. There's Taryn Mowat. One of the all-time great performances we've ever seen at the World Series by a pitcher 12 years ago. Held on to by Muli Pola and a strikeout for McQuillan. Two down. And just in watching her pitch in the postseason going up against Ole Miss, it seemed to be that that changeup and that off-speed pitch were her out pitches. So they're getting people to chase it just like Sammy Reynolds did with that drop ball or getting weak ground balls hit to her infield. Two down for Emma Helm. Helm was the one who replaced Morgan Flores behind the plate as a freshman last year. Had some clutch hits at the Women's College World Series. Now back to the DP spot with Flores healthy for 2019. From Washington, played club ball for Washington's assistant coach and pitching coach Lance Glasso. Check swing back to McQuillan, but it went off of her foot. So it's foul. Emma Helm was a camper. She'd come to the Washington softball camps during her childhood. That's when she first got noticed and eventually got an opportunity to come to Washington and play for the Huskies. Runner at first and two outs for Helm. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, you mentioned Emma Helm and going to the Washington camps. Uh, there's a lot of these players who did that. They took some time to make themselves better, go into a camp, and they get noticed by a college coach. And Emma Helm's not the only example of that. Everybody's story is a little bit different, but Silent Rain Espinosa, who also starts for this Washington team, she was another who went to the camps and got noticed. It happens all, all the time. And Heather Tarr, the head coach, perfectly happy to pluck solid talent out of those camps. Heather Tara, a national championship winning head coach. A decade ago, it's the 10 year anniversary of Washington's national championship. As usual, plenty of purple in the crowd here in OKC when the Huskies make their appearance, something they've done consecutively now for three years. And I just looked up and noticed all of the fans in the stands get so caught up in what's going on right here on the field and on our monitors. But what a crowd for opening day. I mean, this day is beautiful. I feel like we're in California, not in Oklahoma City, with the sun and the temperatures. We're ready to watch some softball this week. Picturesque. Tutu. What a bat by Emma Helm. Forcing McQuillan to extend her pitch total in this first. I'm sure Heather Tarr likes that. Pac-12 co-champion with UCLA. Both teams finished 20-4. Washington pitching and defense, the name of the game. 
But since March 17th, when they got swept by UCLA, they're 28 and 1. And an excellent at bat, as Amanda mentioned by Helm, extends full. Just relentless up there. All kinds of different foul balls we got on the right side, we have on the left side, just getting a piece there on the 10th pitch and 11th pitch coming. Three two delivery. On the ground foul. And a lot of <laughs> different speeds that Emma Helm is fighting off right now. And to me, this is the difference of being on your home field, getting to host a super, is the energy from the fans. You come here, and there's a lot of fans in the stands, but they're very quiet. When you play the super in Tucson or in Seattle, your fans get into it in moments like this. But it's kind of an eerie feeling out on the field when it's kind of silent. Went around, and McQuillan finishes the first with back-to-back -back strikeouts. Two All-American pitchers combined for five Ks in the first frame at the Women's College World Series. At the Women's College World Series, you have to have this kind of fight. Going up against a hitter that just won't go away, but you get her on the rise ball and a little indecision. breakfast on the West Coast right now. We've got three Pac-12 teams at the Women's College World Series. You'll see all three of them in the first two games. As we get close to 9.30 in Tucson and Seattle. So good morning to you and yours. Minnesota and UCLA in our second contest from the Women's College World Series. Great contingent of Husky and Cat fans here. You guys made it. We need one of those, Adam. Pierce takes I was imagining, you know, those uh, cardboard cutouts that have like the really muscular dude yeah. and the woman, like the really, really cool looking woman. Yeah, I know them because we've already taken a we've picture. We've taken a photo in, Bat before. in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at some point about five years ago. <laughs> Darren Alvello struck out the side in the first and is even with Riley Pierce. Pierce, the transfer from Missouri, senior from California. Obviously, there was some tumult in Missouri with three coaches in the last three seasons. Pierce, during that stretch, was one of a handful of players to leave the Missouri program. Ended up at Arizona, and for somebody who wants to be a future coach, picked a pretty good one to coach or uh, to observe in Mike Candrea. Another strikeout for Alvello. That's four in a row. Coming with the curveball. Outside corner. This is a back-to-back -back looking strikeouts now for Arizona. Only Pola struck out looking, and now Riley Pierce. Both of them on the curveball. Outside corner, about 70 miles an hour. Here is Reina Caranco. Another All-American. We have 26 All-Americans, by the way, between the eight teams at the World Series. You're going to hear us say All-American a whole lot this weekend. It was against Washington and Taryn Alvello in the circle that Raina Caranco was 
up to bat, ended up getting hit by a pitch, broke her left hand and also her right thumb. That was back on May the 4th. And she returned in the regionals against Auburn. Which is a very quick turnaround for both of your to hands having least. some sort of an injury and still have to grip a bat. Gripping a glove has been tougher for her than gripping a bat. On the outside corner again. And after the leadoff four pitch walk in the first inning to Palomino Cardoza, that is five consecutive strikeouts from Alvella. You can tell that she's just getting in a groove. It's time throwing a screwball on the outside corner. It's going right at Caranco to get her. There's Hannah Bowen. We talked about finding a groove. Taryn Alvello has found it since that UCLA series we mentioned earlier where Washington got swept. Alvello had a brutal game in that series. Kind of left her out there to eat it a little bit out of necessity and to save the other pitchers. 15 runs allowed in five innings against UCLA. And since then, she has been lights out. Comes back with a strike on Bowen. 15 runs on March the 17th and near untouchable since. Two and two and a chance to strike out the side again. Yeah, she said after that UCLA series that she really felt like she let her team down. The silver lining for her was even though I gave up all these runs, I still had 11 strikeouts and she used that little bit of positivity to help her grow mentally and physically from that point. A ball in play. Straight from the glove, Taryn Atley with a smooth play to close out a 1-2-3 inning. Taryn Alvello, her ninth career Women's College World Series appearance. She said it was unacceptable what she did against UCLA. She's been rock solid since. Back at the Women's College World Series, we head to the bottom half of the second inning. Taylor McQuillan in the circle for the Arizona Wildcats and Tiffany Green, one of the most unique athletes that we know in the country. Absolutely, Adam. She's had a starring role for the Wildcats this season, despite being legally blind in one eye. She was born with Dwayne syndrome, a birth defect that limits movement in her left eye. In fact, she had to endure five surgeries by the time she was six. Now, I know you're wondering, well, what's her view from the circle? What is she seeing? Well, she can see everything in front of her, but she has no peripheral vision at all. So she has to rely on her infield, especially along her throwing side to help her because essentially she sometimes can be throwing to first line. She said, depending on the side of the field and where she has to turn her body, she may be essentially throwing blind to a base but it doesn't really affect her pitching. That defense, as Tiffany mentioned, is where it affects her the most, but an incredible story. Taylor McQuillan brings to us here at the Women's College World Series. A fabulous pitcher the last several seasons, All-American this year. And with Arizona here for the first time in nearly a decade, introducing one of the unique athletes in college sports to you and she doesn't know anything different. She was born with it and has just been able to work through it without knowing what it's like to be able to see out of both eyes. And as a pitcher, you've got to be able to look at your target, see the spin, see the movement, know what you need to adjust. And she's just been so strong through it all, doesn't know any different and is not going to let a disability affect her. Taryn Atley off of McQuillan will not be able to recover and at least safe at first base. And that'll be a single for Atley. Yeah, she said the toughest part is going to be a ground ball towards the right side. So a, slow, a slowly rolling ground ball towards second base or towards first base. This one 
no issue because it's more right up the middle of the field. But the, her picking up the ball, maybe lose sight a little bit. Either way, wouldn't have had Atley at first base. So she's aboard for Kaya Gibson. And came up and in, and she pulled it back. So on that last play, with McQuillan, the way she was facing, with her back towards home plate, had she fielded that ball and had time to throw, she would have been able to see. Her right eye is perfect. Had she been turned around, then that left eye, she does not have the peripheral vision. That may have been a bit of an issue for her. A close pitch, and it's 2-0 and on Gibson. And the thing is, Adam, too, as a young girl, she tried a lot of different sports, a lot of different activities. And at the end of the day, she told her parents, I want to play softball and I want to be a pitcher. And her parents at first were a little bit hesitant. I mean, you're standing at 40 feet away from the hitter. And she proved everybody wrong and she proved herself right that she could do it. And that's what she was passionate about and wanted to grab the ball and get the ball in the big games and run with it. Her parents were worried about getting her into sports, but then she eventually convinced them to try swimming soccer, taekwondo, dance, and once her parents realized how much she could do, they were far less apprehensive about sending her back into those sports. And sure enough, here she is about a decade and a half plus later as one of the great pitchers in the country. Three and one on Gibson. Three and two. Gibson, a former bat girl for Washington softball. You talked about campers and these girls who come to the camps and come to the games when they're young. Here they are playing for the very team that they used to go see games at. A little flare towards second, could be two. And it was dropped by Bowen. It'll be a line out. We'll say that she dropped the ball on the transfer. And there's one away here in the second. Yeah, Hannah Bowen would have had an opportunity to Double up Atley at first base. Line drive right at her. And then Atley took a couple of steps towards second base when she should have been frozen or retreating back towards first base. That's where it got her in a little bit of trouble, but luckily she dropped the ball. We talked about the campers and all the kids, but this might be the best Washington Husky. <laughs> Madison Husky at the plate. Isn't that fitting? Very fitting, I would say. One of the great players in California. I mean, do you have another choice of where you're going to go? <laughs> she said it was a little bit more of a, <laughs> of a coincidence. I guess if you really want to go from California all the way to stores, you can be a Yukon Husky. Just outside. Huskies here. By the way, the NBA Finals starting up tonight at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific over on ABC and ESPN Deportes. Warriors going for the three-peat while the Raptors are in for the first time in franchise history. Game one coverage tipping off with NBA countdown at 8.30 Eastern time on ABC and the ESPN app. UCLA and Arizona well represented, I would say, in the NBA Finals. <laughs> Runner goes. A throw down to second by Muli Pola, not in time, and Atley into scoring position. It'll be a wild pitch against McQuillan. This is a read that I'm talking about that Palomino didn't do back in the first inning and the ball in the dirt that got away from the catcher, but Taryn Atley executes it, gets her lead, sees the ball down, and immediately takes second off of the arm of Muli Pola. Just gets away enough from her. Nice catch down the right field line. A 
changeup that floats high to run the count full. Husky with a big cut. Uh, held on to by Muli Pola. All three of Taylor McQuillan's strikeouts have been when there have been runners on. She's looking good. You have to think about Taylor McQuillan doesn't have experience on this field. While Arizona has a ton of history at the Women's College World Series, this team, this is the first time they've stepped onto this field and gotten to play here in OKC. Including a freshman here in Silent Rain Espinoza. Arizona, nobody on this roster has obviously been here for Washington with such a turnover in their roster from last year to this year. A handful of impact freshmen uh, played key roles, including Espinoza, who's down to the count, nothing and two. She hit a home run off of Taylor McQuillan in game three of that sweep against Arizona this year. Waves at that one and misses. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the first. Back-to-back -back Ks to end the second. Yes, yeah, Taylor McQuillan starting to get these Washington hitters out of their strike zone. A couple of chase strikeouts, one with the rise and then one with the drop with a little bit of tail at the end. Here in Oklahoma City, and a scoreless tie to the third between Washington and Arizona. Taylor McQuillan and Taryn Alvello have retired 12. Nine have come via the strikeouts so far. Eight hitter in the Arizona lineup is Hannah Peanut Martinez, and she'll take a strike. You can hear the Peanut chants for the five foot seven Hannah. There's always the smallest player on her team growing up, so that's how she earned the nickname Peanut. Although, I mean, five seven. It must have been a very early nickname, I guess. <laughs> and it stuck, clearly. And it stuck, absolutely. Big jump this year for Martinez. Didn't participate a whole lot last season as a freshman. On the outside corner, and Paul Eds, the home plate umpire, is giving Alvello that corner. Six Ks already. Yeah, and actually in a few of these looking strikeouts, Morgan Flores is setting up more on the outside corner, and the pitch just doesn't quite get out there. You can see her really do a good job of getting around it. A little bit up in the zone, too, but coming in again at 70, 71 miles an hour. One down for Carly Campbell, the nine hitter. Well, we talked about Morgan Flores behind the plate, and one of the things that she adds to this pitching staff is pitch presentation and the ability to frame on the corners. One of the great technical catchers in the country. And that's a better spot right there. You can see Morgan Flores doesn't have to move as much on a pitch like that. Screwball outside corner. She hits her spot. There's a little bit off the plate, but those other ones are bleeding back over the plate, especially in an 0-2 count. Pick up with that and swing it. Try that same corner and a little too far outside for Paul Ed's taste. And <laughs> Flores thought that she had it. Yep. Framed it up nice and pretty for the umpire, but that's a better spot for, for Alvello. That's Glasso calling the pitches for Alvello and Flores. In at third, Espinoza. Excellent play, two down. And one of the things that Terno Velo told us that she has really worked on since the middle of the season, specifically after that UCLA series, was putting her pitches at the exact place that they need to be. She knows that she doesn't have a ton of movement, that throwing hard is more her style, especially in comparison to Gabby playing the other pitcher for Washington. So she has to have placement in the exact right spots to be successful. Back to the top end, Palomino Cardoza, who was Walked on four pitches to begin this game. Eight in a row retired by Alvelo since. Yeah. 
Appeal down to third. And Don Brown says no swing. It's one and one. Held back. One and two. Chance for another strikeout for Alvella. <laughs> Taryn Alvello had some struggles at times last year, late in the postseason. And a lot of that could be attributed to her health. A broken rib during the postseason last year hampered her as she got deeper into the Women's College World Series. Espinoza's there, and so far, Taryn Alvello healthy and looking it. Three scoreless innings with one base runner. February 13th, 2020, we're back with the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson, and already three Women's College World Series participants are in the field. You can visit St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invite.com. We'll reveal two more teams that are participating in our next game. Ooh, is that a tease? That's what the professionals in the television industry <laughs> call. There's the nine hitter, Amira Malloy. First pitch swinging against McQuillan, and Jesse Harper's there for out number one. I can't wait to see those two teams because I don't even know who they are. It's a surprise to everybody. I'm trying to decide to tell you if I. Do you know it? If I, I'm, I, don't, I don't want to tell you if I knew them or not. I didn't know. I, I, I've learned. I know them already. They, they. It's, I'm wow. not going to lie to the public. Wow. I already know. I'm not going to tell you. Why? Well, it doesn't matter. Feeling left out here. You're going you're gonna to know. You're going to know in like two hours. <laughs> Back to the top. Here's Sis Bates. Ground out her first time up. Only a couple of balls put into play against McQuillan. Bates has one of them with that ground out. And a little bunt attempt that the catcher, Muli Polda, fielded perfectly. And when you watch McQuillan go up against these lefty hitters, she strides across her body, oftentimes throwing a curveball or a pitch that moves across the plate from these left-handed hitters, but it also hides the ball from these lefties. There's two lines that come out on the side of the pitching rubber, and it's her left foot that strides out. And you'll notice that she strides actually toward Sis Bates, our left-handed hitter. And because she does that, it cuts off her release point where she hides the ball right until it comes out of her hand. Oftentimes snapping it across with their curveball that starts at a left-handed left hitter and then breaks across. We'll get a good look at it here. Right back to first. Pierce is there for the play. That one going with an off-speed pitch too, but that's that changeup that she can float in and it too kind of cuts across the plate where when it comes out of her hand as a left-handed hitter, it's so hard to know if it's going to be 65 miles an hour, if she'll drop it down to 60, which is her kind of in-between speed, or if she'll throw a changeup at 50. Two down for Flores with nobody on base. Another first pitch swing. Pierce is over and out of room. A reminder that the Women's College World Series continues with the Championship Series scheduled to begin Monday night at 7.30 Eastern Time live on ESPN. For more information on the 2019 Women's College World Series, NCAA.com, the official home for all 90 NCAA championships. We will have a new champion, so to speak. Florida State, the defending champions, eliminated in the Super Regionals by Oklahoma State. The Cowgirls, the only team to win a Super Regional on the road this year. Flores pokes it to Harper, and a 1-2-3 inning work by Taylor McQuillan. Through three, scoreless in game one.
Oklahoma City. Top four still scoreless between Washington and Arizona with the Huskies head coach, Heather Tarr. And coach, you send your All-American out in the circle. She gave up a walk and then retired the next nine batters. What have you seen in her eyes this postseason that's helped her step it up? Just being herself and knowing who she is, being able to locate and stay in control one pitch at a time. In terms of the lefties in the lineup, you have several of them going against McQuillan. What do they need to do in adjusting the next time around? Yeah, just you got to be aggressive with what we want to hit. And um, she's doing a pretty good job mixing speeds. But um, I think we could be a little bit better than we've been doing. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Tip. Ovello rock solid through three so far. Yeah, and last time that she faced Jesse Harper, the best home run hitter in the country, she struck her out. Only took four pitches, and there were a couple of misses within this at bat, especially that first pitch. Look at that, right down the middle, trying to move her curveball away. In fact, this entire at bat, she stayed away from Harper, but it's the fourth pitch that she had struck her out on where Morgan Flores was moving more towards the outside corner, setting up for something with two strikes that was a little bit off the plate. And Alvello got a lot of the plate and struck Harper out on a 72 miles an hour missed curveball. 1-0 on Harper. 28 home runs to lead the country. Top five in the country in RBIs this year. Junior out of Stevenson Ranch, California. Sister McKenna playing over at Arizona State in the outfield as well. Her mentality at the plate, I'm confident, I'm relaxed. You see the ball, you hit the ball. It's a very basic sounding plan with a lot of nuance to it. And I'm sure not a lot of people other than Jesse herself could describe. And it's led to a prolific season. In from right, Huskies there for the first out of the fourth. It's going to be important for Arizona to start swinging earlier in the count. They're mm -hmm. finding themselves in a lot of two strike counts, a lot of defensive swings, or oftentimes in this game, no swings at all with two strikes, four looking yeah. strikeouts that Alvelo has in this game. Eight of the 11 hitters have seen two strikes at least against him. Of course, Alvelo is fan six. Malia Martinez takes high. Yeah, and Adam, just under half of the strikes that Alvelo has thrown have been called strikes where Arizona hasn't swung the bat. Martinez drives one in the air to right. Husky at the wall, and it's off the top of the fence. Martinez into second with a one-out double in the fourth. The first Wildcat hit of the day. Just take a look at where Morgan Flores sets up on the outside corner. She's moving over to that side. That's a spot that Alvelo should hit, but this is a pitch that's right over the middle of the plate. And Malia Martinez steps up, looking to hit early in the count. It almost had an oppo home run, a solo shot, but she'll take a double instead. Moves herself into scoring position. Or Deja Mulipola. Struck out looking to end the first inning. Part of a junior class that has been the key group for this Arizona team. Down the right field line, Husky into foul territory. It's just a long strike, another two strike count. Alvelo had had a great stretch going back to her last game against Arizona, but the Cats threatening here in the fourth. And I think her speed the first time through got to the Arizona hitters, where even though she was missing on the plate, they were just late, 71, 72, they were behind. And now you're seeing the second time through the order, they're going to start having more foul balls because they're going to catch up to her speed. The only question is, will they be able to punish one of her mistakes? 
Still one and two. This is what the junior class has done for the Cats this year. Caranco, Harper, Martinez, Mulipola, and Palomino Cardoza. 284 RBIs. And then Denham, who's been a great number two option behind McQuillan. A key piece of this Arizona group. Trying to take the lead in the fourth. Two and two. Yeah, Coach Candrea recruited this junior class knowing that it could be a group that he could really build around. Just raves about this junior class. They come from highly competitive travel ball teams. Three and two. It's a couple of good takes by Molly Pola. Not chasing out of the zone. A rise ball up that she took. A curve ball that just wasn't a strike. Took it again to work yeah, herself yeah, to a full yeah. count. Corners play even with the bags. A little late on that swing at 70, and Alvella with another punch out. A clutch one here in the fourth, two down. Yes, yeah, she got her. She was able to bring that rise ball a little bit further down. Like a low rise, instead of one that she's hoping that she chases out of the zone, she gets her to chase a little bit, but great adjustment within that at bat by Taryn Alvello to place that rise ball perfectly. 275 Ks now on the season. Here's Pierce. Alvella, one of the top strikeout pitchers in the country. Now sitting at 870 for her career. That's fourth among active players in Division I. Putting her up with the likes of Nicole Newman, maybe one of the best strikeout pitchers in the country this year. Kelly Barnhill from Florida, who's here. And Megan Good of James Madison, whose team was eliminated by UCLA. Yeah, she's in pretty good company with those folks. Lance Glasso getting out to talk with Taryn Alvello. Alvello obviously has been on this stage before. We saw her pitch in the championship last year but it really felt like she sounded like a leader yesterday in our meetings with Taryn Alvella. Took a lot of pride and a lot of blame as well for some of the lower moments of the season. And she seemed, like you said, like more of a leader, like a seasoned, experienced veteran player who honestly had a lot of confidence coming in this year and herself and also in her team. Nothing and one on Pierce. On the ground a second, Atlee's got it. Alvello leaves a Wildcat in scoring position and we're scoreless through three and a half. We'll talk with the second winningest head coach in the history of D1 softball next. Well, coach, this is a pitcher's duel between these two pitchers, but how have you seen Taylor McQuillan hang in? Well, I think she's doing a good job right now, keeping them off balance, and I think that's the key. You know, with seven lefties in the lineup, I kind of like that matchup. So we just got to keep fighting. And I, I was some, a little more pleased the last uh, go around with some uh, adjustments at the plate. Malia going the opposite field. Um, so, you know, you just got to find a way to shorten up and let her supply the power. I was going to say, they seem to be seeing the ball a little bit better and waiting back a little bit more. Is that what you want? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, she's she's up in the 70s. So it's you've got to be short to the ball. and. You have to have the discipline. Uh, you know, she's got a good curveball, good screwball. Um, you, you just got to make sure that that curveball is over the plate, but you can't try to pull it. You're going to have to go with it. But we just got to keep things simple, try to put the ball in play and make something happen. All right, thanks, Coach. You bet. Take care. 
We asked Mike about the drought. Nine years for the second winningest title team in the history of the sport. And he said it was a disappointment, more so because I didn't give those kids I recruited a chance to play here. That was something he took a lot of pride and satisfaction in. And he admitted to us that he maybe took it for granted a little bit, which that's a very candid thing to say from somebody at the stature of Mike Candrea in this sport as Washington sends Reynolds to the plate in the three spot to start the fourth. He was really candid. And in fact, too, he was even like, you know, it's not like we weren't winning. I mean, we just couldn't get over the supers hump. And he credited that a lot to the parity across the country and how everybody else outside of the Pac-12 has stepped up their game. And it made it more challenging for him to be in Tucson and Arizona and have all these World Series appearances. But to get back here, it's really hard on them. One and two on Reynolds, who fanned back in the first. One of four McQuillan strikeouts so far. Remember, this team got swept by Washington in early May. And after that series, Mike Candrea decided that he needed a little bit of outside influence to maybe get some motivation to his team. Ended up calling several former Arizona players. Reynolds out in front, waves and misses. Called Leo O'Brien. Called Jenny Dalton Hill. Called Jenny Finch. Ended up calling Jessica Mendoza, our colleague, because of his Olympic ties with Jessica and how impactful she's been in Pac-12 history. And the helm takes a strike. Yeah, guys, and then talking with Jessica Mendoza on yesterday just about what she shared, she said, look, it was important to embrace the pressure. It's okay to feel those nerves, those heart-pumping moments. She says it's a good thing. It's a privilege to have that pressure. And the way that the players have come around and handled the big moment, Mike Crandrea said, look, this is uh, an example of why it's okay to have those butterflies because it's important for them to fly in formation. I thought that was a great quote. Butterflies are good as long as they're in line. Yeah, and looking back at all those years, the past nine years that they weren't here, I mean, they just needed to be better in the big moments. And he knew that. They had to be better in the big moments again. And that's what Super Regionals are. It's a tough hump to get over to get here. Helm pops it up. Over is Pierce. And, and I think, too, Adam, it's a matter of just embracing the pressure, understanding that it's going to be there, but you have to learn to work through it in the big moments and feel the butterflies and know, are you scared of the butterflies? Are they like going crazy in you or the formation? I love that when he talked about that. Get the butterflies to fly in formation and now you're talking. Now you're winning the big games and you're getting back to OKC. There's Taryn Atley who's got the only Washington hit. An infield single in the second was left stranded in scoring position. Asked Mike Candrea, too, what did you think of the field? You know, he hadn't been here in almost a decade, and there have been monumental changes to this area and to this ballpark. And he said, man, it looks smaller now because there's so much to look at. The studio sets, the extended seats over the last couple of years. He's seen fence changes at this ballpark. He has seen a ton, but hadn't seen it on this stage in nine years. And new renovations this year, new press box. I didn't want anybody to know that, actually. I wanted people to think that we're really braving the elements out here. <laughs> nope, that's our, that's our, that's our, uh, our, our home now. We got a roof. That's all, that's just, that's a good start. There's a walk to Atley. She's aboard with two outs. Atlee's got some speed at first, and Kaya Gibson comes to the plate. 
pulled foul. It's like almost Candrea brought an old-fashioned pitching duel with him back from the early <laughs> feel, 2000s, I was gonna say. 90s. I mean, that's what we have here. Game one with all the home runs and run scoring that we've had this year. 0-0, zero, zero, only two hits in this game. Each team has one. McQuillan and Alvello shut out softball so far. Well, guys, I got a chance to talk to Mike Andrea just before we went on air, and he said, look, this is the pitcher's duel that I want to see. This is just the way I like it. It's a nice welcome <laughs> back to OKC. <laughs> Last time that Arizona was here, they were in the championship series in 2010, losing to Megan Langenfeld in UCLA. Gibson takes low. Langenfeld had the walk-off home run in game one. UCLA won game two, and Arizona's back for the first time since. Last time Washington was on this field, it was in game two of the championship series when they lost to Florida State. Two and one on Kaya Gibson. Two and two. Trying to come up with a base hit here in the tournament. Just two for 16 so far in the NCAAs. And came inside, got away from Muli Pola, and on to second base goes Atley. And it's a full count with two outs. So she'll be off on contact. Wild pitch, the second against McQuillan. Yeah, Heather Tarr just going over to the Washington dugout, trying to fire him up. Whoa, the bat goes flying towards the Arizona dugout. That ball just out of the reach of Muli Pola. Kaya Gibson lost control of it. <laughs> Quick laugh from JT D'Amico. <laughs> The coach at first base. That one came flying out. And then Muli Pola, after all that, still had a shot. Scary. Wow, you're used to foul balls getting hit hard at you in the dugout, but not a flying bat. Wow. Still three and two. Runner in scoring position. No score. Game one. Fourth inning. The payoff pitch. Still three and two. Barely got a piece of that one. Got another piece of it. Stays alive at three and two. McQuillan's been efficient. Only one hit. One hit batter, but a lot of long at bats. This is going to be the 75th pitch for McQuillan. <laughs> Little floater foul. Four straight fouled away by Kaya Gibson. Tenth pitch of the at bat coming up. Two again. Got her with the changeup. A clutch K for the Cats hurler McQuillan. Just pulling the string. Runner at second base in a scoreless game. And McQuillan with the change up to change speeds. And get that third out. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance, shall we? Taryn Alvello getting the start for Washington, the senior, who is just dealing at 71, 72, sometimes 73 miles an hour. But it's been the way that she's been able to work the outside part of the plate to both lefties and righties with her curve and her screw. She's just blowing it by these Arizona hitters. 
One hit, one walk, that's it. The double in the fourth by Martinez and the leadoff walk in the first to Palomino Cardoza. Only 62 pitches in four innings. She'll face six, seven, and eight here in the top half of the fifth in a scoreless game one. It's even more impressive to me, too, that both of these teams know each other so well. They face each other in the regular season where Washington had those three wins against Arizona. And Alvelo still is finding ways to get these hitters out. This is a good hitting Arizona team. High scoring offense, potent offense, and she's still just being able to shut them down. Toronto fouls it away. Second most home runs in the country for Arizona this year. Only Oklahoma, who you'll see tonight, take on Alabama. Only the Sooners have more blasts this season. And you think, too, out of the numbers that she's put up against Arizona, over 16 innings pitch, only given up one earned run. That one earned run was a Riley Pierce solo shot. Mm -hmm. Shutting down these hitters and keeping them off the scoreboard. Look down the left field line, out of the reach of Bates. Covered a lot of ground to <laughs> nearly grab that one. Barely out of her reach, which isn't very many balls. Yep. And one of the rangiest shortstops in all of college softball, Sis Bates. Rangiest, is that a? It is now. I love that word. Get it right down and down. Please do. I'm going to forget it. You mentioned the Pierce home run back on May the 4th in the 3 1 loss for Arizona to Washington. Bronco floats it foul towards left. This time a chance for Reynolds and she got it. Freshman with the first signature defensive play of the tournament. This Washington defense, they go hard on every ball knowing that they have a chance to catch it. Sammy Reynolds getting herself into position because of a great read and a sprint over to that ball to get that one in the air where I think most of these fans thought it was going to fall. What pursuit by Sammy Reynolds. One down, and here's Hannah Bowen. With the foul. Huskies defensively, as we told you, pitching and defense is where they make their money. The defense that's been outstanding this year, and Reynolds has to clean herself up. Tonight on Sports Center, 6 o'clock Eastern time. We'll get you set for game one. Stephen A. Smith with his take on the Raptors and the Warriors. Tiger with his opening round at Memorial. And the questions surrounding Baker Mayfield and OBJ and the Cleveland Browns. It's all coming up with Sage Steele and Kevin Nagandi at 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Under the glove of Alvelo, the second baseman aptly with a smooth play. We haven't gotten to talk a ton about this Washington defense, but they're good. And we haven't gotten a, ton, a, a chance to talk about it because Taryn Alvelo is just handling business in the circle on her own with a ton of strikeouts. But this Washington defense is one of the best in the country. They showed up at OKC last year, got them to the champ finals, and they're here on a mission again. Adam, in conference games, they only made 10 errors in 24 conference games. This Washington defense is for real. Here's Peanut Martinez, and how about that? Gets the little slap past the infield as they were drawn in against the eight hitter in the Arizona lineup. They'll take it. Anything against Alvelo is a positive, and they've got a two-out base run. Well, we can talk all day about the Arizona power, but how about Peanut Martinez <laughs> running through the box, finding the hole just past this bait. So you said she's got a ton of range. It's right back up the middle of the field, finds a hole. So Spates was more towards the third base side. It's a single. Here's Carly Campbell. Paul Ed's actually flipped upside down during that <laughs> uh, single into center field. I don't know if you realize that. You guys missed it. Too bad. <laughs> it was an incredible cartwheel he just put together. <laughs> that's our um cam that's on the uh, 
mask of the umpire behind home plate. So appreciate the umpiring crew helping us out with some great looks that you're going to see this weekend. On the corner end, it's one and one on Campbell. One and two. Chance for Alvelo to get out with no damage done. One, two. Bates is there. Just the second Arizona hit of the day, but they strand their third runner. Four and a half through, bottom of the Husky order. Trying to get going for their pitcher. Scoreless game. <laughs> Pitcher's duel. Through four and a half. Just three hits on the board between Washington and Arizona. And Taylor McQuillan will go back to work against the bottom of the Husky order, starting with Husky. It's been so much fun to watch this pitcher's duel because both pitchers pitch so differently. Taylor McQuillan likes to mix speeds with that off speed drop ball, work her change up, and then and they throw around 64, 65. And then you have Alvelo, who's bringing 71, 72, just two different looking pitchers. And of course, McQuillan being left-handed, just three hits on the board in this first game. There's McQuillan's counterpart. Popped up. Willie Pola has room. Nice snare by the NFCA catcher of the year, one down. Silent Rain Espinoza. Espinoza has homered off of McQuillan already this year. Three for 15 in the NCAA tournament. And you can see her just getting right up on top of the plate. Her toes are basically on the chalk line trying to take away that outside corner. One of the big parts about going up against Taylor McQuillan, too, is to not chase that drop ball. She rarely throws that drop ball for a called strike. That's that pitch right there. That's the one that you need to take. Got to make her bring it up. And then Silent Rain Espinosa on the plate, looking for that harder pitch on the outside corner, her curveball, trying to take it away. That's how close she is to the plate. Two and two. I heard a couple of coaches say the same thing. It's so hard to cover the whole plate <laughs> yeah. in college softball because there's so much movement horizontally side to side with these pitchers. Tap or foul. Silent Rain Espinosa. That's a wonderful name, obviously. Particularly meaningful for the Native American to be playing in this state on this stage. The roller to second. Bowen is there. Espinosa retired. Her mom, Mackenzie, is originally from a tribe in Maine where her father, Graybuck, is from the Kumeyaay tribe. Dad actually named her Silent Rain. Went to her mom, Mackenzie, and said, I'd like to name her this. And that name, one of the most unique in this tournament. Amira Malloy's got a lot of speed at the bottom of this Washington order, and she turns it over with a bunt single. It's a good read by Amira Malloy. Down in the nine spot, just trying to find a way to get on base to start the top of the order. Look at 
Malia Martinez charges so hard on this ball and it's perfectly placed where McQuillan was taking a couple of steps towards first base. Malia Martinez expecting something a little bit softer and just pushes it right past her. Aaron Malloy just finding a way to get on. Turns it over to Sis Bates. Out uh, of play foul. Speed at first base, as we mentioned, with Amira Malloy. Perfect on the season, stealing bags with an excellent defensive catcher behind her in Muli Pola. Ooh, that one got Bates in the leg, and she'll get first. When you get hit like that, it almost dents your entire yep. foot or your leg, and so you don't even feel like you can put pressure on it. You gotta just take it, like force yourself to take steps to be able to walk, work through it. Got her right to foot. Get, yeah, she tried to get it all the way. Left foot. Oh. You can hear the pop off the cleat. You hope it's more cleat than anything else. Jackie Carell, the trainer, came out to check on Bates, who gets to hop around on one foot on national television for all of us. There's her brother, Jimmy. Gave Nicole the name Sis. Sis would play with Jimmy and her friends, and the easiest way for Jimmy to communicate with his sister was, hey, sis. And that name stuck ever since. A great athletic family. It's a very tight family as well, the Bates crew. Sis wears number 22 because her mom wore it. By the way, congratulations to Jimmy. He was a GA this year, officially hired as the video coordinator for Washington. So Sis, who's got one more year left at the University of Washington, will get a chance to be around her brother, her roommate currently. Two on, two out for Flores. The most powerful hitter in the Washington lineup trying to change this game. And you want the bat in her hands with runners on base, especially in a close game like this. His eight career postseason home runs. Jamie Clark's got the record. Flores has four of those home runs this year in the tournament. The only player in this year's tournament with more was Kate Gordon, who got All-American honors from JMU. She had five home runs in the regionals and supers. On the ground towards short, Harper's there, inning over. Alvello has stranded a pair in the last couple of frames. McQuillan strands a pair in the fifth, still scoreless. Here is Molly McGrath hanging out with Caleb Rowe and Danielle Laurie in our right field set. This is the best place to watch a game. And this one has been a pitcher's duel so far, and I know that you love that, Danielle. Well, I do. For Taylor McQuillan in Arizona, for the seniors' first time in the World Series, I think she's doing absolutely outstanding. Well, I've been so impressed for these pitchers. They haven't made any mistakes, so it's been a tough day to be a batter at the plate. Not many opportunities for a pitch to crush. All right, well, after the game, we'll have stars from the winning team here on set with us, and we will preview game two, which is Minnesota and UCLA. But first, Let's send it back to the booth to Adam and Amanda. Thanks so much, Molly. Thank you, Danielle and Kayla. Ten years ago, Danielle was in the circle, part of Washington's run to the championship, their lone title. Taryn Alvello back in the circle after falling in the finals a year ago. Five scoreless innings, facing the top of the Arizona order. And Palomino Cardoza takes a strike. The second time through the order for Arizona, they had better at bats. First time through, they struck out six times. Second time through, they only struck out once. So you can tell that they're starting to see the ball better, starting to pick up on the speed. See the adjustments that they make third time through. 
Got a hit in each of the last two innings. The double from Malia Martinez in the fourth. The bunt single from Hannah Martinez in the fifth. But Alvelo has stranded all three base runners thus far. One and two. And Alyssa Palomino Cardoza, just a player who's shown so much perseverance, so much fight in her career. Back in 2017, tore ACL two days before the start of the postseason. And then even before that, in 2016, had to redshirt because she tore ACL before the start of fall practice. Checks her swing and stays alive. These are the two injuries, right ACL and left ACL. Was first baseman last year, moving to center field to replace Ashley Hughes. She said she was so happy that she was healthy enough to move around and play in the outfield again. Takes a big cut, but 71 zips past her from Alvelo for her eighth strikeout. And for these strikeouts, she's just really been utilizing the outside corner. Doesn't matter if it's a lefty up or a righty. Screwball, a little bit above the knees. 71 miles an hour blows it by her. Uh, here it is, Alvelo against Harper. So far, a strikeout and a flyout for Harper, the leader in the country in home runs with 28. <laughs> On the corner for a strike. One and one on Harper. 65 bombs already for Jesse Harper in her career. In the air, right center, and deep. And off the top of the fence, it's gone. Over the line and over the hump, Arizona. They get the first one of the World Series on a Harper blast. Got to be ready to hit early in the count, looking for a mistake. Taryn Alvello has been throwing these hitters' mistakes, and they've not capitalized on it until now. A pitch that gets a ton of the plates, about a ball on, and Jesse Harper lets Alvello supply the power, 71 miles an hour coming in, and she just barely sneaks it over that right center field wall for her 29th home run this season. And Arizona takes the lead. First pitch swinging from Martinez. Bates throws her out with a good play. Two down. Bates is going to move to her right, get this one hop, set her feet, and throw. Good quick out by Ovello in the Washington defense after that bomb. Here is Deja Mulipola. Behind Harper, she's the other big bat in a big Arizona lineup with 22 home runs this year to Harper's 29. Just past our friend Jenny Dalton Hill on the all-time Arizona list. Popped up to Bates, and the inning is over. But Arizona, the year of the home run, the Cats doing it with their 107th of the season. Jesse Harper says, I swing big, I commit big. She was committed to the outside corner in 70, and she hits it over the wall. Soda, Rachel Garcia, the back-to-back -back USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year, and the 11-time Natty Champions UCLA getting set to take on the first time participants, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. How about that? First opportunity to go to the World Series, you get the winningest program to play this sport. The second winningest program in terms of titles has the one nothing lead on a Harper home run. Sammy Reynolds drives one in the air. 
for this tie-in. Oh, yes! Almost the same spot as the Harper homer. Reynolds rips it to right center. Again, the first pitch that she sees. She's ready to go, swings early in the count. What a beautiful swing. Heather Tarr talks about how competitive Sammy Reynolds is in the box. She's a pure hitter. She puts a pure swing on that one to tie up this game within minutes of Arizona taking the lead. Here's Emma Helm. Helm sends one in the air to left center. Palomino Cardoza calls off Campbell for out number one. Tiff. And guys, coming into the dugout, Sis Bates looked over to Sammy Reynolds and said, hey, come on, show us the way. Get us going here right now. And she did so leading off with that home run. And pretty good words of advice. She heeded them clearly. Clearly and instantly put into action. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Here's Atley. And how about two? Sammy Reynolds, just a freshman. Her first Women's College World Series game. Watched her teammates play in that champ finals game against Florida State. And she, too, was able to get on the action immediately in game one. Well, Velo's offense picks her up. After McQuillan's did the same for her in the top of the inning. And we talked about that UCLA series being a turning point for just Taryn Alvello in the circle, it, and it was, but it seemed to be a turning point for Washington and their offense a little bit too. They started to swing the bat with a little bit more authority, hit some more home runs, hit for some more power. 36 of their 46 have come since mid-March. Uh, Heather Tarr and Taryn Alvello going over a game plan. If Washington can take the lead, they can put Alvello in position to win it. 100th McQuillan pitch is low, and it's 2-2. Two and two. You got to love the response, and that's what this World Series is going to be about. No pitcher is going to be perfect. No defense is going to be perfect. But you've got to find a way to respond. It was a scoreless game until this inning. Little floater into short left, coming on is Campbell, and she cannot make the play safe at second base is Atley. And the go-ahead run is in scoring position. It's almost like she saw the defense coming in and decided to purposefully check swing one into left. Yeah, Carly Campbell was playing pretty far back. This is able to bloop it in. Behind Jesse Harper and in front of Carly Campbell. Campbell had to cover so much room with Harper drawn so far in and nearly got it. She almost did, hit off of her glove and then was right there. Great hustle by Taryn Atley to not feel sorry for herself because she popped the ball in the air, but to get herself into scoring position. So now the go-ahead run at second base. Kaya Gibson's spot in the order is due up, but a pinch hitter in Ari Quinones. What a spot for her. Women's College World Series debut. And it comes with a chance to give Washington the lead against the All-American McQuillan. Right side, backhanded by Pierce, gets the out. On to third goes Atley. Two down here in the sixth. Oh, 
productive out. And Heather Tarr is going to turn to another pinch hitter. Noel He will climb in in Madison Husky's spot. And Noel He has been a very clutch hitter for Washington in her time. A home run in game two of the Super Regional this year, a clutch home run in the Super Regional against Alabama last year. Big cut. Sophomore from Orange, California. Morgan Flores went down with an injury last season. It was this player who, as a freshman, delivered a speech in the locker room to basically settle the team down. And that was en route to the Women's College World Series last season. A 1 1 to He. 1 and 2. Hearing you even say that, I get goosebumps. And it's not even the same year because thinking about a freshman step up in a room with your teammates. Be really intimidating and say, hey, guys, don't worry. We can work through this. And then she came to Oklahoma City and had a great Women's College World Series. She was the first freshman in a decade to hit a home run as a freshman. With foul. In the air to right center, Palomino Cardoza's back and has it. But an identical bottom of the sixth as we saw on the top after Harper hit the home run to give Arizona the lead. Sis Bates goes up to the freshman Sammy Reynolds and says, show us how to lead. How about this to respond? A game tying home run as a freshman. The senior Alvelo loves it and we're still squared up to the seventh inning. Couple of competing home runs here in game one of the Women's College World Series. Harper and Reynolds, junior and freshman for these two Pac-12 foes. Fast start for the pitchers and a quick burst from the hitters to tie us up at one apiece to the seven. First of four games here at USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium. Riley Pierce leads it off in the seventh for Arizona. Popped up in a foul ground. Huskies out of room. How important is day one? of the Women's College World Series. Only three teams have ever won a championship after losing their first game at the World Series. All eight teams participate today. In fact, the third and latest team to do it was last year. It hadn't happened since 2003, and a decade and a half later, Florida State pulled off one of the more improbable things we've seen at the World Series. It's coming back to win a title after losing your first game. Miss the corner and it's two and one. AM in the second Women's College World Series back in 1983. UCLA in 03, Florida State last year. Those are the only three teams to lose on day one and come back to win the title. There's a lot of years in between those years that were just popped yeah. up on the screen. 20 and then 15. And there was a long gap between finalists, even teams that got to the finals. Arizona was the last team before Florida State to do it, and that was an eight-year gap. That was 2010 in Arizona's last trip to the World Series. They lost on day one and worked back to the finals. 
Tried that same corner. Three and two the count. Well, and usually it's so warm here, too. It's just a challenge to physically be able to come back and, and, and fight on Saturday where you have to play two games and then have to play two games on Sunday to make it to the champ finals once you lose the first game. Today's a nice day. It's beautiful. Payoff pitch to Pierce. Still very efficient for Alvelo for the most part, but that pitch total starting to climb. You know, interesting to note that Alvelo, while she is a third team All-American this year, had not really seen a bulk of the innings in the NCAA tournament. We showed you Gabby Plain early in this contest and her phenomenal performance with four shutouts in four starts in the NCAA tournament. But this is the depth that Washington has had in the circle the last two seasons. It's such a, a tough one-two punch to go up against because Alvelo throws 70 plus. Gabby and she stays more up in the zone. Gabby Plain stays more down. That one came inside, and it'll be ball four, Paul Ed says. Not a hit by pitch, but Pierce is the go-ahead run on base against Alvelo here in the seventh. That was just the second walk of the day issued by the senior. I saw four fingers put up by Paul Ed's, but we may actually see this call changed by the official scorer. Yep, should be. So it will be a hit by pitch, officially ruled. Now let's see if the six hitter can step up for Arizona. Taranko. Nobody out, sacrifice situation to try to move the go-ahead run into scoring position. This is what Mike Candrea was used to, right? Tight duels in the circle and trying to scratch off that winning run late in the game. Some old school softball. Absolutely. That's what you're used to. All right, all right. That's what, we, what we think about when we think of those mid-2000s games, those 1990s games that Mike Candre has seen so many of. And I feel like in the regular season, there were a lot of high scoring games, but I, just a feeling type thing of watching regionals and supers. There have been a lot of close games, Absolutely. a lot of pitchers duels going on. 1-1. One, one. one push down, the third baseman. Espinoza cannot make the play. We've seen a couple of harder bunts off the bats of these two teams that have really worked out, almost like push bunts. And especially with Alvelo throwing 70, it's going to have a little bit more pop off the bat, even in a, a bunt situation. But for Silent Rain Espinosa, ha she has to have this ball to be able to make an out because you go from being able to get an out at first base, maybe even potentially second base on that ball as it was leading her that way, to now two runners on with no outs. It's not going to go down in a, as an error, and nor should it, but that is a defensive play that you expect oftentimes Washington to make. And she was charging so hard, but I think she just got a little ahead of herself. This ball just barely sneaking under her glove, trying to get her feet to that ball too, and it even just hit off the very tip of it, unable to make a play. Be curious what the read was initially. She kind of went down the line when the ball was a little closer to the hole. I'll be interested to see what Espinoza says about that. Now the go-ahead run now in scoring position. Some insurance at first in Caranco. A pinch runner checks in at second base. That'll be Jenna Keene. She's the go-ahead run who checks in for Pierce. And now Arizona with a chance to take the lead, and it's the seven-hitter Bowen coming up. And there's Gabby Plain, the sophomore from Australia who's been dynamite in her postseason career in two seasons, loosening up behind Alvelo. Neither team has a hit with runners in scoring position. Bowen trying to change it. Maybe not. Maybe just trying to move the two runners over right now and set it up for the eight-hitter.
Bunts it foul, and it's nothing in two. Bowen not a big slugger, just one home run this season. And she's really been playing part-time this year. Stepped in for the injured Caranco earlier this year. Waves and misses for out number one. And your job there is to have a productive out, to be able to advance a runner 60 feet. She had three chances to do it, two with a bunt, and then one with an outside pitch, which she would have loved to hit a ground ball to the right side to be able to advance both runners into scoring position. But Alvelo goes up 71 miles an hour curveball for the strikeout. Here's Peanut Martinez. Strike one. Martinez towards Espinoza and out of a reach. Martinez has one of the four Arizona hits today against Alvelo. One single back in the fifth, struck out looking in the third. Oh, two. Two down. Ten strikeouts for Terran Alvelo. Going with the screwball, again, getting a strikeout that's away from a hitter, well off the plate, gets Martinez to chase it. It's a second strike on all by herself. Another pinch hitter for Arizona. It'll be T. Statman. Alvelo, a postseason career high, 10 strikeouts in one of the sparkling performances of her career on the biggest stage. Still not out of it with the go-ahead run at second base for Arizona. Keen, the pinch runner, the go-ahead run. Statman back to Alvelo. She gets out of the jam and gives the Huskies a chance to walk it off. Espinoza, Malloy, and Bates coming up in the seventh. The NCAA Women's College World Series presented to us by Capital One. A look at the bracket. Washington and Arizona tied at one to the bottom of the seventh. We'll have Minnesota, the first-timers, against the 11-time champ UCLA next. Florida and Oklahoma State. Walton against his good buddy Gajewski. Alabama, Oklahoma, they've played some classics here in Oklahoma City. And we go tied to the bottom of the seventh. Alvelo gets the Huskies out of it in the top of the inning, and now hoping that the bats can scratch off one to send them to Friday night. Taylor McQuillan, the senior for Mike Candrea. On her to send it to extras. The silent rain, Espinosa to lead things off. Big cut. <laughs> On the corner for a strike. Yeah, just same spot, different speeds. First one, 65 with a curveball, then dropping it down to 61, almost in an identical spot. Quickly getting ahead of the eight hole. Three pitches, three strikes, one away in the bottom of the seventh. And I love that we've seen both of these pitchers just go right at these hitters. They've not been messing around. Hardly any walks or free passes within this game. Gets Espinosa on that off-speed drop ball well out of the zone. Gets her to chase it. Oh, 
One down for Malloy. Flip that corner again, it's one and two. Hundred and fifteenth pitch of game one coming from McQuillan. On the ground foul from Malloy. Huskies have one walk-off win this season. Came in Puerto Vallarta against Arkansas. Home run tied it in the bottom of the sixth. The one two to Malloy. Little tapper to foot race. In time, no. Malloy beats it out. Charging was Pierce. Bowen was covering. And the winning run is aboard in the bottom of the seventh for the Huskies. And when you put the ball in play, you give yourself a chance to get on base. Exactly what Malloy did, just put it in play and beat out this throw to first base from Pierce to Hannah Bowen, who came over from her second base position to cover. And the wheels of Malloy are just too much to handle. And back to the top for Sis Bates. Pushes the bunt. Martinez in. Slings to the second baseman. Bowen, Bates is safe. So is Malloy. The winning run is at second with only one down. Sis Bates just completely reading the second baseman and Hannah Bowen, who's playing a little bit up the middle. Look how far that Hannah Bowen will have to come to cover first base on this bunt. She sees her there, lays it down perfectly, and then because Hannah Bowen had so far to come from where she started, she's able to beat it out, and now Washington has two on. And not only do they have two on with the winning runs on base, but Morgan Flores, who had the walk off against Arkansas earlier this year, will have a chance to walk it off at the World Series. Only one down and the winning run in scoring position. Taryn Mowat came out to have a chat with McQuillan in the infield. I think Darren, or excuse me, Taryn Mowat's done a great job of calling this game against Washington, just mixing speeds, mixing locations, keeping these hitters off balance. Got to give it to Washington right now for starting up a rally with a little bit of their short game and speed. Outstanding pitcher during Arizona's last championship in 07. And now it's McQuillan against Flores. 0 for 2 with a pop out and a ground out. Got hit by a pitch back in the first. A base hit could win it for Washington. Popped up. Nothing in one. This is the moment Morgan Flores was waiting for. A chance. Sitting in the dugout all of last season in the second half and into the postseason with that torn ACL. Takes a strike, good pitch, and it's nothing in two. Inside, one and two. What a take by Morgan Flores to not go after that pitch. Reading the spin, reading the speed of that, understanding that most of those off-speed drop balls are going to be out of the zone. One, two. In the air, right center. 
Palomino Cardoza makes the catch. Both runners have to head back. If that gets down, this game is over, and Palomino Cardoza ran it down in the gap to keep this game alive. Remember last year, she was playing first base because of a torn ACL of her own. Just couldn't quite get that speed back. They moved her back to the outfield because she can make plays like this. She loves playing the outfield. If, you, if she had the choice between first base and center field, it's center field all day robbing Flores of the game-winning hit. And now it's Sammy Reynolds who tied the game in the sixth, a chance to win it in the seventh with the winning run in Malloy at second base. This game only extended because of Palomino Cardoza's excellent D. We talked about Washington's defense, Adam, but Arizona sneakily has a top 10 fielding percentage, too, in the nation. Yep. They're eighth in the country. That's a big improvement from last year. Good take it. It's 2 and 1 on the freshman. Fouled away. Two and two. A chance to send us to the eighth. The winning run, Malloy, got aboard with an infield single. Bates bunted her to second. The 2 2 from McQuillan. Check swing, did she go? No swing, says Don Brown on the count. Runs to three and two. It's another good take, Adam. I know it might not look like much, but to the average viewer, this is huge. It extends her at bat. She doesn't strike out. She's able to hold up to get something a little bit more up and sweeter. The 3-2. On the ground to first. Fair ball. Pierce steps on the bag. And after we didn't have a single extra inning game at the World Series a year ago, in game one, we're headed to the eighth. Palomino Cardoza with the big defensive play. She'll lead it off. Harper in the top of the sixth. Reynolds in the bottom of the sixth. The only runs against Alvello and McQuillan today. And on to the eighth inning with high drama to begin the 38th Women's College World Series. Palomino Cardozo with a clutch rundown in right center field of a fly ball off the bat of Flores that could have won the game. She'll lead off the top half of the eighth inning. Why not? Extra innings to start it up here in 2019. of contemplation quiet for Alyssa Palomino Cardoza. Heard a little louder in the stands here at OKC for the Cats. What do you think of this Amanda the last time we played an extra inning game at the Women's College World Series we played 17 innings in game one of the 17 championship series. It's a good nugget. Classic between Oklahoma and Florida. Who, by the way, if they both win today, would meet on Friday night in a 1 0 contest. That's where these two teams are trying to get to. Top of the Arizona order against Alvello. Here the chance APC for Palomino Cardoza. And most fans familiar with her know her as Alyssa Palomino. She added the Cardoza this year. Her stepfather, Jesse, legally adopted Alyssa. And in honor of her stepfather, she added Cardoza to her now hyphenated name.
She's got rich history with Arizona of all the championships and all the great names. Her aunt, Tony Macarenas, was part of that 2001 World Series championship team. She talked to her aunt this week. You got any advice for me? Two words. Go win. Palomino Cardoza pops it in the air. Espinoza's got to shield her eyes and cannot make the play. That's a couple of defensive plays. Espinoza will tell you she probably should have made. And especially, she's right there. It's a pit in her glove, but you could just tell she wasn't sure, wasn't completely underneath it, just a little bit off, ends up dropping it. No clouds, the sun right in your eyes if you're looking up right now. Two and two. And I know that Jesse Harper and Deja Mooley Poli get a lot of attention in this Arizona lineup, but Alyssa Palomino Cardoza is another large, powerful hitter and a, a large part of this offense for this Arizona team. Two, two delivery. Pop back in our direction. Says a prayer before she gets back into the box. A 2-2. Two, two. Three and two. And the steady backstop, Morgan Flores out to chat with Alvella. You're given another chance, like the way that she is within that at bat with that drop fly ball by Espinoza. You want to take advantage of it. Payoff pitch. Just got a piece. And she's been on a couple of pitches within this at bat. There is the slugger, Jesse Harper, who homered to give Arizona the lead in the top of the sixth. 3 2. Off the fist and popped up foul. just aren't giving in. There's only been a few mistakes, and one of them was to Jesse Harper back in the sixth inning when she hit the solo shot. This is the pitch sequence. Started her off the plate. I love this pitch right here, but it's the third one that she hit out, and it's a mistake. The first two pitches she threw off the plate, and then Jesse Harper was hunting a mistake, and she got on the outer half. Trying to give Arizona the lead. Popped up towards Bates, charging. Oh, this time Espinosa makes the play. Makes up for a couple of miscues with a big second out in the eighth. This one could have been in no man's land. You could tell that Sis Bates was a little bit hesitant to go after it. She saw her going, and I, it's hard to hear the communication all the way up here, but hope that Espinosa was calling for that one. That's why Sis Bates slowed up. Man, that could have been a bad collision, Oof. too. Here's Malia Martinez. It's a gutsy move as a freshman calling off the two-time yeah. Pac-12 Defender of the Year on an infield <laughs> pop-up. Yeah. Martinez doubled. Flares one into right field. That's down in front of Husky for a base hit. Coach Candrea's words back in the fourth inning when we talked to him. His hitters had to shorten up, let Alvelo supply the power. 
And Leah Martinez done the best job of it in the lineup. A couple of hits for her today. Who's got two of the five? Cat hits. And that'll bring up Deja Mulipola. Has fanned twice today against Alvelo. Once looking, once swinging. Popped out back in the sixth. And you can tell, too, that Alvelo in this game has relied mainly on that outside corner. She's gone up a little bit with her rise ball, gotten a couple of chases, but the higher percentage of pitches have been away from hitters. That's a big pitch right there. Just talking about it. He got the call. Morgan Flores helped her out a little bit. That was well off the plate, but it's the inside corner that I'm talking about. Maybe you wanted to use a little bit more now that we're going into extras. Again. And Washington swept Arizona during the regular season in Pac-12 play. They've won 28 of their last 29. The finalists a year ago, Arizona, the second winningest title team in the history of the sport, back for the first time in nine years. Extra innings in game one. Here in the 2019 Women's College World Series, Minnesota UCLA to come up next. About a half hour after the conclusion of this game. You know, it's always the worst as a team that's waiting because everything's <laughs> yeah. timed up just perfect for that. What was what time were we supposed to start? Two thirty. Yeah, two thirty Eastern. And you get here and going through your routine. We, we'd, and be, then we'd be about <laughs> doing first pitch right about now. <laughs> and then everything goes to a halt, and it's like, wait, we, what are we doing? We're just chilling in the outfield right now watching this game, <laughs> waiting for it to start. We warmed up for nothing. They see the camera, waving to it. That's beyond the left field wall. Two balls and two strikes on Mulipola. In the air to center. Malloy back at the wall, and the Cats take the lead. Actually, one of the slowest pitches that Alvelo has thrown in this game. Sixty-eight miles an hour, right down the middle. Didn't get inside enough. Supposed to be a rise ball up and in on the hands, but instead it got to Molipola's barrel, and she knew it. Right out of the box, a no doubter to center field to give her team the lead and get a little bit of love from her historic coach, Mike Andrea. Pierce to Bates. Good play. Good play at first by Gibson. And that will end the inning. But the two most prolific home run hitters in the Arizona lineup today have gone yard. Harper in the sixth and now Muli Pola in extras to give Arizona a 3-1 lead. A chance to head to the Friday night second round game. Bearing down up the first baseline, the Arizona fans pumped after Deja Muli Pola cranks a two run blast, her 23rd of the season. And now the Arizona Wildcats have tied the Oklahoma Sooners at the top of this year's home run charts in college softball. And that last one, the biggest one of the year so far, to give Arizona a 3 1 lead to the bottom of the eighth. 
the middle of the Washington order. Helm, Atley, and Gibson do up against Taylor McQuillan, the All-American. Both Alvello and McQuillan. Lengthy outings, over 120 pitches each. But now McQuillan a chance to win it. And just think about it, Adam. Washington in the postseason had just given up one run in five games to get here. They've and given up three on two swings in this game. And the only other way that they had given up that one run was a home run. Solo home run. Hit off of all Velo. So the only way that they've been scored against was with the long ball. Four runs allowed in the tournament by Washington. All all Velo on three home runs. That's it. One one on Helm. Hits a first. Knocked down by Pierce. Good play. One down. And Arizona and Taylor McQuillan just have to be thrilled with the way that she's thrown in this game. She came in here just wanting to be a different pitcher with a different look of her changeup being a difference maker. And she said, I want to be able to throw any pitch on any count. And because of that, she's kept these hitters off balance and she's been able to stay in this game and give them different looks. Here's Atley. Doesn't have a home run this season. It has been on base all three times. Infield single in the second, walked in the fourth, doubled in the sixth, stranded all three times by McQuillan. Out of the count, 2 0. There's a strike. And Adam, you think back to too, the toughness that it takes to walk onto this field, having never played here before with this Arizona team, and come in and do what McQuillan is doing. It's nerve wracking, but from the first pitch on, she has been ready for this game. Not let the nerves affect her whatsoever. Maybe feeling those butterflies, but in this game, they have been in formation. Two and two on Atley. Three and two. Arizona has lost four straight games against Pac-12 opponents in the NCAA tournament. Trying to snap that skid, a short skid. But the last time they won a game against a Pac-12 opponent in the NCAA tournament, Nine years ago at the Women's College World Series when Heather Tarr's team fell to Mike Candrea's crew. Payoff pitch. Inside ball four and the tying run will come to the plate with one out for Washington in the eighth. How about the day that Taryn Atlee's yeah. had in the five spot? Four times aboard. Two hits, two walks. <laughs> There's Kaya Gibson. It was pinch hit for in her last at bat in the sixth. And she had a runner in scoring position. They brought in Quinones. She grounded out. Gibson re entering the game, trying to extend the inning. Ball and a strike. You just tell how hard that Deja Molipola back there behind the plate works to frame <laughs> up those pitches yep. and get a called strike. We have a great view of it from up top, but remember, this is a little bit of a wider zone for Paul Eds. Popped up. Martinez is there, and there are two down. Here's Madison Husky, the tying run and the last chance. Take strike one on the change. Pinch hit four back in the sixth inning. Noel, he flew out to end the frame. Re-entering Husky, 
in right field and now a chance to extend the inning. Popped up. Bowen out. Nine years since they were last here and the Arizona Wildcats have won their opener at their first Women's College World Series since 2010. And they do it with the long ball against one of the best pitchers in the country. Well, and it was after that Washington series where Washington swept Arizona. That was the turning point for the Arizona team. And look at them when it really matters the most. Come in here, game one, play the team that sweeps you, and you get the win in extra innings. So the sixth seed, Arizona, pulls off the first upset, so to speak, at the Women's College World Series. And they will be sitting and waiting for either Minnesota or UCLA on Friday night in a 1-0 contest. Seventh inning. Remember, with the winning run on base for Morgan Flores and one out, Alyssa Palomino Cardoza with a great play to run down that fly ball. McQuillan would get the final out, and then to the eighth, still tied, Deja Mulipola. After Harper did it in the sixth for her 29th, Muli Polo with her 23rd, a two-run shot in the eighth off Alvelo, and a 3-1. to one. Arizona win. Let's go down to Tiffany Green. And standing by with the champion for today, and Deja, what did you see in that moment when you were up to bat getting your first hit and it came in a big way? Um, I looked over at first and saw Malia Martinez. She looked at me and clapped her hands and said, let's go. So I knew I had to do it for the team. I had to step up, and I did, so... Coach talked about all season long and really the back half about being in the moment and handling the big moment. How do you all think you responded today? I think we did good. Um, we didn't get too high today and we didn't get too low. So I think we took a deep breath each inning and played our game and it showed. So. And lastly, the performance that you saw out of Taylor McQuillan in the circle, she continued to battle in this pitcher's duel. Um, yes, it was a pitcher's duel and she was working hard. So our offense tried to work hard for her. And lastly, what does this moment feel like? You guys hadn't been back here since nine years. This is your first appearance with this team. What does it feel like? It's so amazing, especially because we got swept by Washington. So to come back and have them our first game and have a W is amazing. All right, thanks. Congratulations. Thank Extra innings for the first time since the 2017 Champ Series, and we got a great one. 3-1 to one Arizona. They move on to Friday night. They'll await the winner of Minnesota and UCLA in a half an hour. We'll see you then. The Cats win it 3-1 to one over the Huskies. Here's Molly McGrath and our great crew.